Uh, okay, I mean, some people have said um, dialogue. Some have said brute force. I mean, which would be the best, in your own opinion, um, path to follow in ending this um, <laughs> economic sabotage? Let me just put it in, well, that, for in, me, that, in that sense. Well, for me, brute force is not going to work. It never worked during Obasanjo's period. It never worked during Yaradwa's period. And it's not going to work now. The Niger Delta region, especially the creek, is a very uh, versatile and uncontrolled. In fact, you, 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 when you go to the creek, you get a sense whether people live here at all because it's so vast. So even, even if you put five divisions of the army, you cannot really make impact because this oil infrastructure is scattered across the region. You know, so uh, my suggestion is, is counterintelligence by way of dialogue. We need to talk about the fundamentals of this country in terms of how do we restructure Nigeria, how do we, you know, give powers more to the communities. You no, know, the, the militants are talking about resource control, but even if you settle the militants, you still have more militants coming up in terms of the youth, unemployed youth in the region. So you have to talk to the communities. You have to talk to those that the pipelines are passing through their backyard, so that. When you bring them to, when you look at the PIB, Petroleum Industry Bill, you have to look at the clauses that talks about the community and also giving them some share in, in, the, in the crude oil or whatever um, rents that comes from the region. That way they can be able to police the crude oil infrastructure. As it is now, a situation where you bring in strangers to police the, the oil infrastructure is not going to work. And a situation where they are living in abject poverty is not going to work. So you have to use counterintelligence by way of dialogue, using third parties to reach across to those who are behind this. And, you know, now go to the real fundamentals of how do you restructure Nigeria for this oil, um, for this in, um, agitation to stop once and for all. Yeah, well, some were even saying that one of their demands was the implementation of the CONFAB uh, report. Is that true? Of course, some of the some of the requests, some of their their demands are also part of what is in the CONFAB. You know, CONFAB talked about to federalism, talked about um, you know uh, resource allocation. You know, the CONFAB recommended a lot of progressive um, ideas that can move this country forward. Well, so it is incumbent on the president and also the ruling party to find a way to you know look at look at it holistically and arrive at a a compressive solution to this whole all right well we have to see how this plays out in the coming um days weeks months and exactly. I mean, we don't want to see it get to years because i mean a lot of pipeline explosions and vandalism is still going Always on. on a daily basis exactly you know? but now thanks for coming on the program and giving us your perspective on uh, this issue yeah thank you very well, much still to come on the program we'll be looking at your tweets your messages on our facebook platform as well as our google plus page and we'll also be reviewing the most viewed videos on our youtube channel in the past week join us again The video of an expert suggesting that the dreaded Sambisa forest can be made a grazing reserve tops the list of our most viewed videos from the bottom. Up next in fourth place is the threat by resident doctors that they will embark on strike if certain demands of theirs are not met by the government. 
coming in third place, lamentation of a former Niger Delta militant claiming that the oil-rich region has been neglected by the federal government. Everybody stop talking now, attention. In second place is the report of boxing legend, also regarded as the world's greatest boxer, Muhammad Ali, who passed on last week. And topping the charts is the call by Bakassi strikers and fellow Niger Delta militant group, Niger Delta Avengers, to stop the bombing and vandalization of pipeline installations in the environmentally degraded part of the country. It is cheaper to make peace as war leads to more destruction. Fellow compatriots of the Niger Delta Avengers, please shoot your swords. Well, there you go. Those were the videos that you watched the most in the past week, as well as the comments that you sent in the course of the program. However, while many stakeholders have been calling for dialogue, others believe brute force against the militants will solve the present problem the country faces. But the onus lies with the government to take out time and decide which approach will best bring the quagmire to an end. Well, that's the program this week, but we continue online via the addresses showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I am Victor Mathias.